Hello students, welcome to Tutti Tut. So in our last session, we have seen Genco 2015, Telangana State, Genco 2015, Power Systems questions. And before that, we have seen Networks questions also. So now in this session, we will see the Power Plant Engineering questions. Okay. So the first question, the load on the power plant with respect to time for 24 hours are given as, so they have given the data for the 24 hours the time and the load okay so next they are asking about the load factor of power station is okay so what is load factor so load factor is nothing but load factor is nothing but okay so average load okay so our average demand or average load anything okay so average load divided by maximum load okay so that's what load factor is but how you can get the average load here so one time it is 40 one time it is 50 okay so sometime it is 60 so like that right so for this 24 hours you need to calculate the average entire average you have to calculate okay so if you want you can draw the load curve okay so there is no problem let's consider this is zero hours okay so like two hours two hours gap you can give for easy easy understanding okay so early morning okay so 2 am okay so next it is 4 am so next it is 6 am okay so next 8 am like this entire all the things you need to distribute like this okay so then there will be some car like 0 to 6 how much it is 40 okay so 40 megawatt will be the so 0 to 6 0 to 6 am it is okay so like this this is 40 okay so like this this is in the megawatt okay so megawatt it is load it is okay so like this one by one you have to draw okay so but what you will get from this one ultimately you have to find out the average of all these values yes or no if you want you can draw the load curve okay so from that load curve you will be understanding otherwise what you need to do so directly we need to do this okay so because there will be less time in the examination from the load curve also average you can find out otherwise you see here 6 hours here 2 hours here 4 hours here 2 hours here 4 hours here 4 hours here 2 hours of time okay that means some of the loads continuous load of 40 megawatt for 6 hours that means 40 into 6 total how much it is 40 into 6 is 240 okay so 240 megawatt in this 6 hours now here 50 megawatt for 2 hours okay so then you will be getting so this is 100 megawatt okay so next 4 hours 60 then you will be getting 240 megawatt okay so next 12, uh, 2 hours here again 50 then 100 megawatt see what I am doing I am calculating entire load for the day okay for the full day how much is the load first i am calculating that okay so next this two hours over next four hours 70 okay so then you will be getting so 280 okay so megawatt okay so next two four hours here and 80 we have so then you will be getting as 320 megawatt okay so then two hours 40 means it will be 80 megawatt so this is all the thing okay so this is the complete load for the entire day okay 24 hours so total 24 hours we have calculated for this okay so see for the 24 hours if we add all these things this is 400 okay so 400 plus uh, 280 is 680 680 plus 100 780 okay 780 plus 100 is 880 okay so 880 plus so here 240 and 240 remaining so then it will be 480 okay if you add these two so 16 so uh, 12 and 13 okay so 1360 megawatt of load is there for the entire day how many hours for the 24 hours what you need to do you need to calculate the average load so this is for the entire day what is the average load now average load is equals to so 1360 divided by 24 okay so this is the average load you will be getting okay so you need to substitute this average load here this is 1360 divided by 24 divided by what is the maximum load see maximum load what is the maximum load 7 no 80 is the maximum load okay so you need to substitute the 80 here that's it so 0 0 will be cancelled 8 ones and here also 8 ones then 5 will be remaining so then what you will be getting 8 7 so okay so 17 divided by 24 will be the answer for us okay 17 divided by 24 okay so let's do this one 
17 divided by 24, 0 point, so okay, so 0, so 170 it is, so 24 sevens, okay, so 24 sevens, so what you will be getting, so 24 sevens, 168, okay. So that's what of 0 0.7 you will be getting the answer, okay. So 7 and the remaining will be only 2, okay. So then again you need to give 0. So 70, uh, 0.70 and uh, you, you will be getting as a 8. This is the exact answer but if you see in the options they have given here. So they have adjusted this value as the, so 0, 8 as the 1, okay. So this is the answer for us okay so like this you have to do okay so anyhow if they give the load curve for the 24 hours so you can calculate even more values also okay so in a different question i will explain so all these different calculations also because in 500 questions we are giving right okay so this a different model of questions also will be coming from that so there we will be discussing okay and the next question the a power station having load factor equals to 70 percent capacity factor equals to 50 percent used factor is equals to 60 percent and the maximum demand equals to 20 megawatt then annual energy production okay so annual energy production they are asking okay so annual means for the entire year how much energy is producing so you know energy so energy calculation equals to average power okay so how much is the average power into so the number of hours yes sir no number of hours so that means for a year they are asking so that means annual number of years that means for one year okay how many for one year how many hours are there okay so one year how many hours are there that many hours you need to multiply so average power only you need to average load otherwise average power you need to calculate okay so how you can get the average you have maximum here 20 megawatt how you can get which one will give the average load for us so this one will give the average we have just seen right average load divided by maximum load is nothing but our load factor so here so load factor is 70 percent means 0 0 0.7 equals to average okay so load divided by so maximum load is 20 megawatt okay so megawatt they have mentioned so then average load you will be getting average load equals to so 20 into 0 0.7 is 14 okay so 14 megawatt will be the average load okay so 14 megawatt is the average load so now 14 megawatt is this value number of hours only we need to do okay so that means the entire calculation we can do like this okay so we just need to multiply that's it so entire energy per year okay so energy for the one entire one year is nothing but 14 into so 24 hours per day into 365 like this we can do okay so otherwise this value is also fixed okay 24 into 365 if you want to remember you can remember it will come as 8760 okay so if you multiply these things so then you will be getting as so what is the answer i have did this calculation already okay so that's why i have choose 122.8 gigawatt hour okay so like this you will be getting okay so that's the entire energy for the year understanding right for any generator we can calculate like this okay so on that generator load is this much okay so yearly how much generation it is happening like that we need to understand okay so anyway we will see the case study also we will take any power station and what are the different aspects of that power station how it is working so that we will explain in a different different video because if anybody gets selected from here definitely they will understand more concepts from that session only okay so next one boiler rating is usually defined in terms of okay so anything remember not only boiler anything rating will be depends upon the output okay so rating will be depends upon output and losses okay so majorly based on the losses we need to represent the uh, the rating okay so generally for the electrical electrical machines okay so otherwise electrical equipment okay so here also for the boiler so based on what we need to represent okay see the options maximum temperature of steam okay so temperature we should not represent okay so as because temperatures that we are only giving there so that's not the output we are expecting okay so heat transfer okay so heat transfer also we are not expecting what we are doing there we are doing the steam generation 
what is the use of this boiler with the boiler we are making the so steam okay so that's why it has to be in the steam only steam output how much it is coming like that okay so anyhow so the kg per hour so that's the how much steam is coming per one hour okay so based on that you will be giving the rating okay so important question only it is also okay next one when inspection doors on the walls of boiler are opened flame does not leap out because leap out means it will not come out okay so for example so a full boiler is there okay so you, you need to inspect right whether combustion process is happening properly or not just like so our olden days okay so we will be having some burning things after that on that we will be keeping our bowls and for cooking purpose okay so we need to continuously inspect right like this okay otherwise we need to put the air into that okay understanding so even though there is certain gap so the flame will not come out so even though in the boiler also whenever you do open the doors inspection doors if you open like this that will not come understanding so that will not flame will not come outside why it is not coming means so there is a air force produce air force means forced air we are we are sending in in that so because of that so it will not coming outside and actually because of sending that air inside forcefully what is happening means negative pressure is negative pressure is creating inside okay so even though we might have observed this one in the movies also okay so otherwise the steam okay so whenever locomotives steam locomotives okay previously trains okay so train engine so when they will be continuously keeping some uh, keeping some coal and putting inside with some window only okay so how they will keep that inside but that flame will not be coming out so what is happening forced air will be present there that's why that flame will not be coming out okay so because we are creating inside a negative pressure okay so for example in a pipe okay so for water is flowing very fast okay so that the pressure of that water is less than less than atmospheric pressure means then definitely that water cannot come out okay so anywhere it is happening okay so like whenever negative pressure is there inside it may not come out okay so that's what so the pressure inside is negative that is the correct answer okay so those holes are small okay so not this answer that is not a perfect answer flame travels always in the direction of flow okay so that's also not the answer so these holes are located beyond the furnace furnace okay so no that's that's wrong okay so we need to inspect continuously whether combustion process is happening properly or not so that's why so pressure inside we need to put it as a negative and it will give more advantage also okay next question the use of regenerator in a gas turbine cycle okay so gas turbine cycle why we are using regenerator means so in the regenerator the heat we will be so heat we will be so increasing okay so because of that the efficiency will be increased but output will not be increased okay so even though output to increase the output you need to increase the input here also but here efficiency is increasing means the losses we are decreasing that's it okay so there is no other option okay so increases efficiency but has no effect on output okay so that's what so that means the output is not much uh, no change is happening but only efficiency is increasing there okay so that's what it means next one so reheating in a gas turbine okay i have already explained this one in different video so whenever you are doing reheating okay so it will improve the so turbine work okay so it will improve the turbine work so otherwise work load it, uh, work so how it is doing the so turbine it will be improved okay so but it's not like improving the efficiency okay so efficiency will not be changed because of this okay so next one in steam turbine terminology diaphragm refers to what is a diaphragm okay so so separating wall between separating wall between rotors carrying nozzles okay so next one the ring of guide blades between rotors a portion between low and high pressure sides okay a flange connecting the turbine exit to the condenser what are all these all these options every option is some something it has in that okay so but you observe one thing since steam turbine so diaphragm they are asking okay so diaphragm where we will be using this diaphragm so wherever steam flows there only we need to use this diaphragm okay so because there should not be any so damage for the rotor blades and all these things okay so that's why to separate between rotors carrying nozzles okay so steam carrying nozzles we need to provide this diaphragm okay so that's what it means okay 
so next question in hydroelectric power plants what is happening so both operating and initial costs are high both operating and initial cost are low operating cost is low and initial cost is high operating cost is high and initial cost is low okay this is just so economics of uh, one of the power plant okay so they are asking about a hydroelectric power plant now you observe one thing for hydroelectric power plant so where you where you used to construct wherever two hills are there between the two hills river flow is there we need to construct the dam here so we need to transport so many things up to here okay machines heavy machines we need to transport into the hills means there will not be any proper roads and all these things okay so that's why so initially and very big it has to be the dam construction has to be very big and you need to install so many so machines also inside okay so this is all very huge process okay that's why the initial cost of this initial cost of the hydroelectric uh, hydroelectric power station is very high okay so but you see what is the input here input is water input is water okay we are not purchasing the water okay so from the river we are not purchasing the water so input is free so and operational cost is also very less input is less input is free okay here for us so only running charges will be there that too very less charges that's why operating cost is very low okay and initial cost is very high okay so that is the answer so next one the function of surge tank is to okay so where it is surge tank so this is one of the very very important question surge tank so where it will be so from the dam okay so from the dam so we will be taking we will be taking one tunnel so in this is called tunnel okay so tunnel so after that so to increase the pressure and to vary the pressure we will be using a pen stock it is called pen stock okay so uh, at the end of pen stock uh, we will be having the uh, so nozzle okay so this is called uh, nozzle okay so nozzle so from this one okay so there will be water coming out uh, so under this we have to keep the turbine water turbine we have to keep okay so don't think it will be straight like this okay so it has to be from the top okay so what will happen for example more load is there electrical load okay so more electricity or more demand is there we need to give the more electricity okay so we need to give more electricity means more water has to come okay so how more water will come this is almost 2 to 3 kilometers away okay from this is called power house after this there will be so generator right this is called power house understanding so power house so this power house is located almost 2 to 3 kilometers away from this dam understanding so it may be a little bit far also okay so it can be even more far also there is no problem so whenever sudden load changes is there definitely we need to send more water right so if you release from here it will become more late that's why what you need to do immediately something has to be there okay which will release the water to this for example if load has decreased water we don't want that much water that means less load is required so less water is required sometimes at that time what will happen water will hit back in this one understanding so that means in this pen stock there will be positive pressure sometimes sometimes negative pressure will be there okay so that if it hit backs so you see whenever in a pipe water is not going means there will be some pressure creating inside and it is hitting backwards because there is speed governor system here it will increase the nozzle and decrease the nozzle width like this so based on that pressure in this it will be increased and decreased okay so but it that water will not be going to the so uh, directly to the dam right so what you need to do is you need to put some surge house here understanding we need to put some surge house here what is this surge house otherwise surge tank okay so this is only surge tank okay so what will happen so in from this one water will be coming like this so here also it will be so little bit of because of the so because of the some effect okay so the water will rise like this right okay so it will be like this now whenever more water is required this water will come understanding whenever less water required this whatever available water in this one negative pressure will be there it will push up a little bit this water okay so this surge tank is happy is this surge tank is helping this process okay so helping this process and this surge tank so you tell me one thing 
this surge tank has to be near to the dam or near to the powerhouse. So already this is very far right. That's why we are using this facility. Okay. So that's why this surge tank it has to be near to this powerhouse. That is also one of the so very very important bit. Okay. So the function of surge tank what it is relieve water hammer pressure in the penstock. What is this water hammer effect? So the positive and negative pressures happening on the penstock is called so water hammer effect. Okay. So if you see the other options. Okay. So produce the surge in the pipeline no need of creating any surge okay so supply water at a constant pressure okay so that's also not the reason none of the above is definitely not the reason okay so this is the answer for this okay so the next question the ranking cycle efficiency of steam power plants is okay so it will be typically 40 percent okay so that is the uh, so typical answer so if you have only this option you need to choose this one otherwise uh, this is the correct answer for us okay so 30 to 45 45 percent okay so that's it about uh, uh, the power plant engineering questions okay so we got 10 questions from this one from the power systems okay so previously we have understood like uh, uh, more than 18 questions came okay so that's what important subjects we have so in the next session we will be understanding uh, measurement questions okay so later one by one we'll understand each and every subject questions okay all the best thank you so much